Hello, Ed here from Crystal Clear Aquatics. Today, we're going to talk about sex. I can see you squirming in your seats, don't worry. I'm, uh, I'm talking about frog spawn. Spring, it's that time of the year when frogs, if you're lucky, are spawning in the pond. And in this little pond that I've come to service this morning, which I built four or five years ago, there are copious quantities of frog spawn. So it's a good time just to talk about these little uh, froggy friends. Now frogs are fantastic for the garden. You want to do everything you can to encourage them in your pond. And they like a lot of undergrowth around the pond. Nooks and crannies in the stonework here provide you know, great refuge for amphibians. But this particular pond has got a real abundance of spawn. And this, this shelf here is, is covered in it. So this spawn is a, is a week or two old and you can see that many of the, the embryos have started to take shape and to hatch. So we've got some little tiny tadpoles here and the first few days once they've hatched they'll feed on the, on the plasma, on the gelatinous sort of mess from the, from the spawn and they'll take some nourishment and protein from that before they become free swimming and start to feed on little crustaceans and, and daphnia and small cells of algae etc in the pond. Now frogs spawn prolifically. They've got a very low survival rate. Everything will prey on tadpoles in your pond. Dragonfly larvae, diving beetles, water boatmen, fish. And as the tadpoles get older, they'll start to become more carnivorous and start to prey on themselves as well. So don't be alarmed if you see a huge abundance of spawn because very little of it, sadly, will end up fully developing into frogs. Now you can differentiate frog spawn from toad spawn and newt spawn. Frogs have this very obvious big blob or sort of raft of spawn. They like to spawn in the shallows. Don't be too concerned if it's very shallow like this that we have a frost in the evening because frog spawn has a natural antifreeze and it will quite happily tolerate mild frosts. If it's going to get extremely cold, you can either knock the spawn down into slightly deeper water, but you don't really want it to go right down to the bottom of a deep pond. Or in shallow shelves like this, you can lay a towel or a cloth over the top of it for the evening just to keep the worst of the frost off of the spawn. Toad spawn has beautiful long ribbons of spawn which you see sort of wrapped around and entwined amongst the plants. And newts will lay individual eggs folded up amongst the leaves and the plants of the foliage. So it's very easy to distinguish frogs and toads from newts. Now when a frog is spawning, you'll often see um, your frogs at the bottom of the pond appearing to, to be giving each other piggybacks for a few days or weeks before they start to spawn. And that will be the female with the male sort of latched on top. And that's a term known as amplexing or amplexus. Um, it's instinct at that time of the year, the male's not really thinking about anything else. And his natural instinct is to grab hold of the female and then he locks onto her amplexing with his, with his forearms around the body. And the poor hapless female will have to endure this for a few days or even weeks. She'll carry on with her daily life um, potentially feeding and, and moving around with this male on her back. It's not an easy ride for the male either. Um, he'll quite often hang on for his dear life without feeding at all, but he also has to fend off other males that will be looking for a female. And so, without letting go, he'll be fighting off um, other male attention as well. So occasionally, poor females, they can be inundated with a few males attached to the female to the extent that she'll be weighted down at the bottom of the pond and she won't be able to come to the surface to breathe. And unfortunately, I have encountered at this time of year ponds that have been littered with dead female frogs with males still attached and toads as well. So if you do see a group of frogs on top of one, it's best not to disturb nature, but occasionally you can use a net pole or, or with your hand and you can just sort of, you know, push a few off. Frogs do nothing but goodness for the garden, they're fantastic. There's not many things in the garden that are gonna eat snails and small slugs, and, and frogs are one of them. They're quite a voracious little predator, and they'll pick off many insects um, and, and bugs and nasties in the garden. And in a pond, they don't do any harm either. But you do need to be careful at this time of year. If you've got a fish pond, and you've got some reasonably large fish, some big goldfish or some big koi, and you've got frogs spawning, I have witnessed this, a frog will try to latch on to, a male frog will try and latch on to anything that's moving. I've been working around the pond with my hands in the water and a male frog has come along and tried to grab me. And I've also seen fish with frogs that have, are amplexing that have grabbed hold of the fish. 
and I have witnessed fish that are swimming along with frogs that are attached to the back of the fish, which could be a bit distressing for it. Now a little fish, you can net it out of the pond and generally just that movement, just that scaring will dislodge the frog, but if not, net it and very carefully pull the frog off of the fish. Slightly more concerning is if you've got large koi carp in a pond, and again I have witnessed this, although it is quite rare, I've seen frogs that have latched onto the, to the head or the face of a large fish and in their um, amplexing and in, in, in grabbing hold of the fish they've been able to push their arms and their feet through the eye sockets of the koi which obviously is, is not very nice at all, distressing to see and, and not nice for the fish. Again in this particular instance I was able to get the frog off and the fish didn't seem to have any lasting effects but it's certainly something just to look out for if you're a fish keeper and you've got frogs please 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 don't you know don't put the frogs off don't remove them from your pond or get rid of the spawn because it's great stuff to have but just a daily check on the fish and if you notice anything untoward you can deal with it you've got to be careful when you're working in ponds at this time of year i had intended on performing a spring service on this pond which would have entailed a, a, a vacuum removing some of the sediment and the sludge from the bottom but because so many of this is hatched and there are tadpoles littered all over the bottom I'm inadvertently going to hoover up some of these and I don't want to do that so I'll leave this aspect of the service well alone I can still carry on with trimming back plants if they need it fertilizing plants cleaning out the cascade and the stream the filtration system I can replace all the various components that need to be replaced at this time of year and I can leave the tadpoles alone and then later on in the summer once they've developed the frogs and disappeared then I can perform a, a vacuum on the pond but overall if you've got frogs, you're very lucky. Now, sadly, frogs, all amphibians really, are in decline. Loss of habitat goes to show the importance of having even a small pond in the garden. It makes such a difference to, to frogs. Uh, they were hit with a virus uh, a few years back, which really, really depleted numbers. It's very important um, not to move frog spawn or frogs really from pond to pond. I know it's very tempting to share frog spawn amongst people if you haven't got any but it's best not to. It is possible that you can introduce disease from one pond to another in the process of moving frog spawn around and you can also inadvertently introduce invasive non-native species of plants from one pond to another. So best let nature take its course and leave it alone. Of course, in the instance where a puddle or a pool is going to dry up entirely, move that frog spawn and, and, and put it somewhere where it's going to have more of a permanent supply of water. Well, I'm going to carry on cleaning this pond and giving it a service. I'm Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics. Thank you for watching.